All right, Miss Linda, we appreciate you inviting us over to your beautiful yard. Hi, thanks, Chris. Thanks for coming. No problem. You have beautiful hydrangeas. Well, I have some, that's true. <laughs> you have a lot. Can we talk about some of your common hydrangeas, though? Yes, there are four primary hydrangeas grown in the Mid-South, okay. and uh, there are 13 species totally, but four that are primarily grown here. Okay. And the first one to open in the spring is the oak leaf hydrangea, which is a southern native. It is uh, easily identifiable because it has a big oak leaf shape to the leaf. Right, very distinct. Yeah. Yes, and this grows, uh, the blooms grow on old wood, so you have to keep your husband and his pruners away from <laughs> it right, in the right. spring. And the men go out in the spring and they want to prune and cut things mm -hmm, back. Mm -hmm. Luckily, my husband's not a gardener, so he doesn't bother. So you don't have a problem. But, All uh, right. That's true. But if you cut anything off any time after the end of July, you are going to cut off next year's bloom. Okay. Uh, these don't even need much pruning. They don't need much water either. You, know, you can kill them by overwatering them. Yeah. So they're good in a woodsy area where there might not be a lot of irrigation. Okay. Since they're a native, they grow in the wild and they never get any irrigation. So wow. and they survive. So they need a little, but uh, they do really well. And they always have white panicle-shaped blooms that are yeah, great to cut nice. and bring indoors. And you would only want to prune them if they get out of bounds or if they get leggy. Okay. And uh, these are drooping a little bit. I'll probably cut these back at the end of July. So you would consider it to be leggy? Yeah, then. because okay. it's drooping. Well, I do like some of it coming down to the ground, okay. but I like it growing up a little bit more. And I have some back here too in the deeper shade, and this will take deep shade, okay. not a lot yeah, of sun. That's going to be my next question, okay. In our heat, they tend, the blossoms will tend to get burned. Okay, yeah, it's definitely a beautiful plant, but yeah, distinct leaves on that. Yeah. So let's talk about the next common hydrangea used in the south, the hydrangea macrophylla. Yeah. These are the most common hydrangea grown yes. in the mid-south, especially in the Memphis area. This is hydrangea macrophylla. It's uh, actually also called a mop head or even a French hydrangea and, uh, or hortensia, the French way of saying it too. Um, I think this is all summer beauty, which is okay. a great reblooming variety. Most uh, of the common hydrangeas, the blue hydrangeas that we grow here in the mid-south, uh, you can see the leaves are kind yeah, of rounded. You can tell them by some of those, they're a little bit large and fat, but kind of rounded leaves. Most bloom on old wood, so you need to be careful not to prune after the end of July. But these are grow actually on new and old wood. Okay. So you can prune them in the spring, but primarily you would not prune these after the end of July because if so, you'd be cutting off a lot of the bloom Blooms for next right. year. Okay. Now, I don't do a lot of pruning. Uh, you can to make it bushier, one of the things that's great to do in the summertime is when you cut blooms to take inside mm. is to trim back to a good healthy node or you can also like take something like this and pinch it at the end and do pinch pruning okay. and this will increase the uh, it'll grow more stems out from there you may want to come back a little bit further uh, but it'll uh, encourage it to grow more stems you'll get at least two branches off that oh, so you'll have more blooms and it will thicken up uh, the first couple of years that you have a new hydrangea in the ground, you would not do any or pruning at all, okay. really. Uh, it's just not healthy until you wait a while. But once these get a little bit That's bigger, nice. and you can uh, fertilize them in the spring with a, uh, a 15, 30, 15, or a uh, 15, 15, 15. Okay, a complete fertilizer. A, a okay. complete fertilizer. Uh, not too much on the uh, nitrogen, of course, okay. because you want to get blooms, which right. is the middle number. Uh, but they do pretty well without it. They just have to have, in the south, they have to have enough light to get a good bloom, but they have to have enough shade that they don't burn up in the afternoon. Mm. They're really a maritime plant, though we think of them as a southern native. They like it from 40 to 80 degrees. Wow. And when we get up around 90, they go pretty dormant okay. and they'll also start to flag a bit. They need, these need the most water to get through the summer too. Okay. But uh, usually they will perk up at the end of the uh, afternoon and the evening, if, even if they're drooping during the day, if the sun hits them, they'll start to droop. Okay. Look, I definitely wanted to ask you about the different color blooms. How do you get those different color blooms? Well, it depends on the uh, cultivar of the plant. They are primarily going to be blue in our acid soil. Mm -hmm. You can encourage that by using uh, a soil, at, you know, acidifier. Okay. 
but uh, depending on the cultivar depends how intense the color is. Okay. If it's a darker blue or a medium blue or a light blue, so you usually buy it or look it up, buy it when you can see the bloom or look it up on the internet for a photograph. Now we're in late May and these are not quite fully uh, expressing themselves. You can see there's a lot of creamy color here. This will be a darker blue. That one actually has pink and yeah, blue nice. and violet, which yeah. we kind of call blurple. <laughs> blurple. And it's okay. uh, probably just That's because nice. of the soil. I have a lot of leaf mold that I put mm -hmm. around my plants and that helps keep them pinker. When they're in a container, they grow well in containers. That container soil is going to be less acid also and they will be pinker in a container. But you can change the color and you have to change it when the buds are very small, much like this one, Okay. Uh, because uh, you would treat the plant and it's usually in late winter is when you'd start to treat and just do it the once, follow the correct. So you have to do that early and not this Yes, because it won't change the color of these that are already expressed. All right. But uh, it will, these little, they look like little broccoli buds. That's a good they time do. They sure do. to do it. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's go check out what else you have for us. Okay. So what do we have here? This is Hydrangea paniculata. This is one of the two sun-loving hydrangeas. Sun-loving, okay. always bloom yeah. on new growth. Okay. So their pruning needs are different. And uh, this is actually a later summer bloomer. As you can see, it's uh, while the hydrangea uh, macrophyllos have bloomed, this is actually not going to bloom for another three or four weeks. Okay. It's the latest to bloom in the season. And uh, it will have only white blooms and they will stay white, although they can age a little pink. There are a lot of new cultivars out that pink up very quickly with okay. the hydrangea pink. paniculata. But it's not, uh, there, you don't have trouble with cold weather with these. They love the cold weather. Um, and like I said, they have to have enough sun to bloom well. So full sun? Yes, mm -hmm. pretty much wow. full sun. Now, here, actually here in the south, they need some afternoon protection okay. shade. Okay. Because if not, the blooms will get burnt. Okay. But pruning on these, they bloom. A lot of times I don't get mine pruned very well and they still bloom well. But you can prune these pretty hard, about a third of the branches. You just need to leave three good nodes on a stem. Oh, that is pretty And hard. everywhere yeah. when you cut it back, I cut back pretty hard when yeah. I do prune. And it causes three stems to come out, so you get many more blooms okay. and many, you know, a much bushier plant. This is still a fairly young plant, but it's going to be ready for some pretty heavy pruning next spring. Wow. So, um, but they have beautiful white blooms and it's very reliable. It's, it's just about foolproof. Okay. It's very easy to grow here in the Mid-South. Wow. So if we men have pruners, we can actually You can, yes, you can learn to prune this these. One, right? That's true. Oh, That's that. very true. Okay. Let's go to the next. All right. So what do we have here? This is one of, another one of the uh, hydrangeas that blooms on new wood. Okay. This is Hydrangea arborescens. Okay. And this is uh, probably an Annabelle, uh, the most common. Mm -hmm. And these are actually foolproof also. Okay. They bloom all on new growth. Uh, at the end of, uh, I leave them up all year long. They, they're just starting to come out. They're a little bit later blooming than the macrophyllas. They look kind of green now, but they'll have a big white head on mm. them. I have some that are just huge heads out front and they uh, leave them on all year, they're fine. They need sun to bloom. They get a little wilty in the heat okay. of when it gets over 90, but they pop right back. And if you water them enough, they should be okay. But the great thing about those is you don't have to touch them the rest of the year. Leave Good. the blooms on. I love the blooms in the winter, especially if it snows on them. Okay. And uh, around February, late winter, when I go out to prune, I prune them all the way down to the ground, maybe six inches, but you can prune them all the way down to the ground. Now, as these are fairly uh, young plants, as they get stronger, uh, they do tend to be floppy in the rain. They're okay. breeding some that are, have stronger stems, but you can leave a kind of a ring of maybe 12 to 18 inch stems around the outside and it'll help support a okay. little bit. Okay. Uh, so you can put rings. I think I have rings on some of these. They grow up through the rings and you wouldn't see those except when you prune them. But I also take bamboo stakes about five I've seen feet, that done. Okay. and I poke those in around the plant mm -hmm. and run a little twine around them, twine. and it keeps them from flopping. Okay. If not, you have to come out and shake off the wet flower heads that wow. causes them to droop, and then they would hold that shape. Okay. But these are absolutely stunning. They're great to dry. 
I always have a big basket of them. You can decorate the, with them in winter. Uh, they're, they're just foolproof. And sometimes I haven't gotten around to pruning them up until April, and that's fine. Just delays the bloom a little bit, but they're still going to come out you know, and bloom like their little hearts out. They're just great bloomers. Yeah, that sounds good, foolproof. I think Absolutely. I can handle that. I think okay. the and leave the blooms you. on, you say? You can oh, leave. yeah. Okay. Now I cut some and bring them in. Okay, sure. uh, One thing about cutting these flowers and macrophyllas to bring in the house, you have to, you cannot cut them when they're too young. They need to be fully bloomed out for about two or three weeks. Okay. Because if not, they're just going to wilt. And sometimes you get floral hydrangeas that wilt. And one good thing you can do is you can actually soak them. If you have a lot of them, soak them in a tub of water. Okay. You can cut the whole bloom with the stem, submerse it in your sink in uh, just tepid or kind of cool tap water. And you can, uh, they will leave them there for about an hour and they will really perk up. And okay. we do that a lot too. If they, I pull, if I get some in a floral ar arrangement and they start to wilt, they were just picked too early. And I pull those out recondition them and I can put them back in an arrangement. Good deal, good deal. So they're really great to work with. Okay, so what do we have on the bricks Now this here? is uh, really the uh, one of the climbing hydrangea. This is okay. anomala, anomala, uh, anomala hydrangea. Okay. This is subspecies Petiolaris and this is probably the most popular. It's really the prettiest. The only thing about these is you can see one little bloom. Ah, I, see I just mm. put this on this wall last year when the tree it was living on was taken out. Okay. And I did get some blooms this year, but a lot of times it has to grow up pretty tall and have a lateral branch on it. As you can see, those uh -huh, are uh -huh. some are hugging the wall, some have some lateral branching. That's when it will start, start blooming. You can put it on a tall pole and it will usually start to bloom earlier, but I like it to climb up something high like a tree. Okay. It grows in sun or shade, but the blooms only last about two weeks. That's oh, the biggest wow. drawback. Mm -hmm. But they're pretty uh, types of, uh, of uh, lace cap blooms, but you can see the leaves have kind of silvery veins and I they have a that. really pretty structure and they turn golden yellow in the fall. They're just stunning. They're very pretty, uh, but they look really pretty, I think, all through the year. And yeah. they will grab the brick. You have to be careful planting them on anything that's Yeah, that's gonna be my next question paint. about the brick. Yeah, yeah okay. once these got, we helped attach them a little, but they'll just grow right up the brick and, and it's like ivy, you don't get them off, so. Okay. Now what about pruning? Uh, I'd never prune these. Okay. Uh, you can prune if you want to keep them. Now if they get up too high and start to go a little wild, I have to get on a big ladder and I will prune them some. There may be a few that are going the wrong way or over to my window and I can, okay. you can prune those off pretty much any time. But I've never had to prune one of these. Usually they're very slow to, to get started so you don't usually prune them very much. But they, uh, they're gorgeous in the fall and uh, they have a nice pattern, but the leaves are that silvery leaf is really pretty yeah, all through the beautiful, year. Beautiful, beautiful silvery leaf. Ms. Linda, yes. we thank you much for the oh, tour you're of your garden to see your hydrangeas. We definitely appreciate that. You're welcome. Thanks right. you for coming. Thank you. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. To find out more information on this topic, just click on the familyplotgarden.com link in the description.